hello everybody welcome back to divas diamonds and dollars podcast we bring you the key success principles for business personal finance and leadership to empower you with the tools and strategies to help you live your best life we invite you to lean in for possibly the best conversation you have had all week now today we're excited to bring you an installment from our signature voyager interview series as we probe the mind of experts from all walks of life to bring you 10 questions and the expert answers that can change your life. So today I'm pleased to introduce Anne Bennett, the founder of Renegade Branding. Anne is an international speaker, best-selling author, coach, and brand profit builder. Anne uses her marketing and branding genius to help women entrepreneurs and a few good men build their standout personal brands and boost their profits. And works with purpose-driven entrepreneurs who do transformational work so they can liberate and ignite their unique genius, authentic voice, and build a profitable, profitable brand platform. Anne has 25 years of experience in visual and graphic design and has brought her talents to many major magazines from Popular Mechanics to Vogue. Anne's personal slogan and the cornerstone of all her programs is, it's smart to fit in, but it's brilliant to stand out. And welcome to Divas Diamonds and Dollars podcast. Thank you so much. This is really a, an honor and a privilege. Well, we are going to have a good time, Anne, but before we get started or as we get started, please set the tone for us because I imagine that when people hear the word brand, one's mind is likely to jump to logos or maybe colors, but surely there's more to it than those two elements. What would you say? How would you define it? I would definitely say it's not your logo, your colors, your website, or what you wear. Oh, okay. uh, the brand is really <clears throat> has a life of its own, if you will. It's it's a expression of your vibe and your values and what you really stand for. So when we go to work on looking at your brand, we're looking at a lot of things. Um, if somebody wanted to start to look at it for themselves that would be what breaks your heart and what pisses you off would be a good place to start. Wow. Okay. I, I can see I'm <laughs> going to be, I, I should be taking notes here. I knew it. So here's one thing that I've always, I'm sure many people have wondered in what way should your personal brand reflect or otherwise be different from one's business brand? In my world and my belief system and how I, I work with my clients is it's pretty much the same. Okay. Your business brand might add a few more principles to it, but generally, if you can really dial in what you believe, what you stand for, what you care about, what, what kind of community you're looking to build in your business as well as individually, you'll find that they're pretty much the same, pretty much the same values. Because we have our values. Our values happen when we you know, first zero to eight years, they don't really change. You might add a few things in, but generally we are, are fully formed and all of our concepts and ideas, although sometimes a little misguided <laughs> by an eight-year-old, but you're still, you're basically who you are and those values go throughout your life. Well, that is an interesting timeline. We had a, actually, we started off our year talking about values. That's interesting. We, sh we should have had you on earlier, Anne. <laughs> so oh, anyway. Right. Um, Branding is really, you know, it's an expression. Uh, it's an impression, expression, and an emotion that you transfer to your audience. Okay. I think you're totally changing my whole mind about what I thought a brand was. We'll see where we end up. I know. It's so much fun, right? That's what happens when people get around me. They're like, that's a brand? What do you mean? They're kind of get. Okay. Get well, this is probably related, but I'll ask you anyway. So how do you help clients find their own secret sauce, otherwise known as their USP, right? Because they're like, oh, you have to have a USP. You have to be able to communicate that. So I'm guessing a lot of people don't really know what that means or don't know their own. So what are some suggestions to help people find this key branding element? Or is it, do you think it's a key branding element? Yeah, there's definitely a key branding element to um, each brand. Each brand is a unique um, 
It has a unique life of its own. In, in my um, system that I've created, there's four brand archetypes. You're either a nurturer, disruptor, innovator, or a geek. Mm -hmm. And they all have characteristics. And within those characteristics, you can build out your messaging, what your marketing should sound like, all the, all the elements we talked about previously, the visual elements to a brand, you know, need to all align and be completely um, congruent with uh, the person who's leading the business. So like Steve Jobs was congruent with Steve Jobs. Oprah is congruent with Oprah. She's definitely a nurturer, you know, so she's spiritual, generous. Uh, we feel like she's our BFF. You know, that kind of person mm -hmm. would have a specific languaging in the way they speak, the way they show up would, <coughs> look like, would be very different than a disruptor. You know, disruptors, I use Madonna as somebody or Lady Gaga, somebody who um, loves to upset the status quo, is uh, very opinionated, and we follow them because we're wondering what they're going to do next. <laughs> Well, I know I'm definitely a nurturer now, and I got to figure out what to do with that. Okay, mm -hmm. good. <laughs> so I know you already scolded me, but I'm going to ask you the question anyway, because some years ago, I made the decision to always, if you will, wear red lipstick and usually a black top or clothing in my headshots, social media pics, and et cetera, just mm -hmm. to, I was operating on the theory that a consistent appearance would help me make me more memorable. Um, is there any truth to this? Does it matter? Or how important is retaining a consistent look in our business personas? <clears throat> yeah, must, must, must have a consistent look. Whatever you decide that's going to be. Um, mostly because what happens is we have a very uh, active bullshit meter, right? We can really read people. We, as a, you walk into the room and you think you're presenting a particular way, because you can't see your own eyebrows. Yeah. But other people see you, your energy, your vibe, they pick it up immediately. So if you're like, oh, if you're someone like me who is really more of a disruptor and you're walking in like, I'm really nurturing. I'm such a, I'm such a big love bug. You know, people are kind of like, really? And there's this disconnect. Mm -hmm. So on social media as well as live, it's kind of like when you're dating. I don't know, online dating, I don't know. Are you married? Uh, not married, no. Okay, so online dating, which is how do you meet people, right? So you want your pictures and you want what you're saying about yourself to align because when you meet the person and you're like, oh, I didn't recognize you. I didn't, you don't look anything like your photos. Not so good for trust, right? And we're very interested in connecting with each other right now. Mm -hmm. And and really feeling out, if you will, with your gut, mm -hmm. do you trust this person? Is this person the right person for you to take you from wherever you are to wherever you want to go? And in that way, you really need to be in alignment and consistent. I don't know if I'd put you in black, by the way. <laughs> well, I used to work in the... I love I used to yeah, well, I used to work in San Francisco, and that was kind of like the city uniform. So, like, it, I have a lot of black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do yeah, like I bright was, colors. I yeah. lived in New York, so everything was black. You know, everything was black. Right. So we kind of just tend to gravitate, but you know, what we should wear or what we should look like. So it's interesting. Um, I'm just going to mention in relation to, again, to my being consistent in appearance, you know how you go to a networking event and you exchange contacts or whatever and you say, and then sometimes you just try and link up or connect like on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So someone sent me an invitation. We were talking. I'm like, I don't see it. I don't see it. And I'm scrolling and I go to my profile. He goes, oh, I know that lady. And I just burst out laughing. I'm like, uh, hello, that's me. So, so <laughs> much for my consistent appearance. He didn't get it at all. So I thought that was <laughs> hilarious. So anyway, I'm That's still, hilarious. I'm a work in progress, as they say, right? Well, you know, I always say to my clients and to everybody else, it's iterate to awesome. Start okay. where you start mm -hmm. and then iterate and iterate and iterate until it's finally, um, 
it's a it's a masterpiece, right? It's masterful. And I think what keeps a lot of people from moving forward, either in their brand or message mm-hmm. or building their business, is they think it has to be perfect mm-hmm. before they can actually go out and um, get clients, make money and do all that. So it's important to um, allow yourself, you know, as an entrepreneur, we're always changing. We're always- you must change with the times, you cannot be stagnant. That's my motto, yeah. one of. Or shiny object syndrome might be one and the same. So what are, I know you've got them, what are some DIY branding horror stories or mega no-nos that you've come across maybe to serve as a cautionary tale to our listeners? Okay, great. Well, there's always, uh, you know, there's so many fascinating things that we do as human beings. You know, the the whole thing about branding and messaging is the psychology of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> so much of we think we're putting out um, a message, and we're actually putting out the opposite message. Sure, sure. Right. So, if you are a geek, let's say, you want your message to be all about I have a plan, I have a blueprint, hmm. I can take you from point A to point B. You might not do it perfectly, but you're problem solving along the way, but you're giving somebody that impression that you totally have it buttoned up. That's why we love geeks, right? So um, let me think of a client client story. I had a client who, um, he was so funny. um, My client, Todd, he came to me and he was like, Ann, I never have clients in the summer. I don't know if anybody else experiences this, but the idea that people stop working during the summer and go play with their children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of people think that, but yeah. um, it's not necessarily true. But what happens is there isn't the market consistent marketing mm. that occurs. So when people have t- downtime, they're just off playing. So for him, it was like, he was a marriage and family therapist. Oh. And um, we're rebranding him to kind of up level into the sexy category, a little more sexy category, because <laughs> he was a little bit like um, a nebishly, nebishy nice guy with his suits were baggy. Oh, <laughs> He just wasn't styling the whole love scene. Mm. Get my drift. And yeah. um, so we redesigned him and we re packaged his whole look and um you know he doubled and tripled his income i think that people need to understand that branding isn't just about you know how i look or what i say it's actually the driving force to your income so when it's inconsistent or it doesn't express what you want people to know so you're kind of a brand is you're controlling the narrative Mm -hmm. Right, like we wouldn't ever see Oprah riding a motorcycle wearing leathers, <laughs> right? Or like, there's a big difference between Beyonce and and Lady Gaga in their style. They're both singers, very very good singers, but Beyonce is much more um, powerfully feminine. I would mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. she gives. She really comes in with the the feminine power position gaga is a lot more of a disruptor she mm-hmm. comes in with like let me do this wild outrageous stuff right coming out of an egg or having a meat dress or right, any of those right. things that are really really pushing the edge not that beyonce doesn't do that as well she's very edgy as well mm-hmm. but it, it has a tone of being super feminine and so when people cross those things over, it doesn't work. Right, same thing. Like right. Beyonce yeah. in a meat dress is not going to no. happen. <laughs> no. Be a conversation for all the wrong reasons, yeah. Exactly, not going to happen. So I think, you know, with any of my clients, when they come to me, they're always looking to dial it. They're always looking to iterate what they have Mm -hmm. so it's more directly an expression Mm -hmm. of who they actually are so in your case 
if you were the nurturer, you, we would be dressing you in yummy, yummy stuff. Hmm. So everybody wants to hug you. Hmm. And this thing you have on today is pretty appropriate, actually. This, what'd you say? Share out your dress. Oh, you this top? You like that? Yeah, because it's open at the neck. This, this fuchsia color is really, that's a beautiful color for you, actually. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, totally off topic, but I said, I've got these tops and I definitely have to go on vacation. But anyway, <laughs> so I'm, I'm planting the seeds along the way. Right. You're definitely going on vacation. So briefly, though, because I mean, I liked your whole nebbish to quote unquote, a sexy therapist. But um, have you just had to like, you know, folks come in, they feel like they've got it going on. And you're just like, you know, we need to start from ground zero. Have you had to mm -hmm. ground zero anybody? Yeah, I think. I try to do it in a, in a fairly, I don't know if loving is the right word, but a fairly, uh, you know, this isn't gonna work for you oh. kind of passion. I can be very direct with people, uh -huh. but I think what happens when they come in and they think they're um, an innovator, let's say, mm -hmm. and they're actually really a nurturer, mm -hmm. very different uh, styles. So they come in as an innovator and I'm like, well, how's it going? Are people like really attracted to you? Well, you know, I've got my thing going on. I'm like super styling mm. da, 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 da. and I'm like, mm -hmm. I always look at the bottom line, which is the amount of money people are making. Sure. <laughs> well, That's kind of a wake up call. You that can is do, a good measuring stick. Yep. You, know, you can do what you want to do, but it's more about, do you have consistent income? Do you have people calling you? Mm -hmm. Do you have the visibility um, that creates opportunities for you? Mm -hmm. I think um, people who are completely convinced that they are doing things right mm -hmm. probably don't need me. Mm -hmm. I don't try to convince people right. to my point of view. Mm -hmm. I just find people that are ready to add that into what they already have or start mm -hmm. in that direction. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think we need a couple hours, but um, <laughs> well, <laughs> just well. saying, but okay, here we are, you know, for the budget minded quote unquote, other, what are the first three must haves to make a good impression? For example. I think when you, um, the first thing that you want to know is how do I communicate the value of what I do and the future that someone is going to achieve when they work with me? Super important. A lot of times people talk about all the nuts and bolts, mm -hmm. all the tactics of, mm -hmm. oh, I know this, if you're a healer, I know this modality and this thing, this and this. No one really cares about what you do. Right. They're ultimately after a result or who mm -hmm. they get to become, mm -hmm. who they're developing themselves into or a result of what they want. So the biggest mistake, I think, is people talk about. Um, so if I was talking about brand, I'd be talking about your colors and your website mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff instead of, you know, what would it be like if when you walked into a room, people were attracted to you. Mm -hmm. And when you spoke a few words, like six to 15 words, they leaned in mm -hmm. and wanted to know more instead of leaning out. Mm -hmm. And that's like what everybody wants. Right. So you wanna talk about what people are actually after. Mm -hmm. So even with this, the same therapist I was working with, um, I taught him how to do blogging and all this stuff. Oh. And he's like, okay, I'm going to write about relationships. And I'm like, Todd, relationships. Okay. Communication. I'm like, okay, communication. Why do I want that? Mm. Why do I want communication? It's Thursday. I'm headed into the weekend. What am I really after? I'm after an intimate relationship and a really great sex over the weekend. Mm. That's what I'm after. And yeah, you got to communicate to have that, but that's not the driving force. Right. So I think a lot of times people miss the driving force. Like a lot of my clients, I say to them, they ask me what women actually want. 
I'm like, they want to be rich, happy, and hot. Well, that's just about that's just about covers it. Okay. And take a vacation. <laughs> With the make on vacation. And travel, right. right. And take a tra- and travel. But I think, you know, we're very basic and a lot of times um, people get way up in their head when they're talking about what they do. Sure. sure. We want to simplify it. Like when I talk to my clients, we we're simplifying everything into, you know, three sentences. They're like, well, we're just using these, sh- what I call regular language. We're not using fancy words or mm-hmm. things that people have to think about what I just said. Mm-hmm. It just hits people. Boom, boom, boom. Super simple. So that's really important. Um, that's two. I have one more. Let's see. Mm. People actually, 80% of buying decisions are made from your energy. So people need to understand you think they're buying, you know, the service that you do or the product that you have. The truth of it is there's many of us doing the same thing. Sure. So why do I, why am I attracted to, to you over someone else? And generally, it's because our energies connect. Sure. So you want to be very um, sensitive to your energy. I always do exercises that pump up my energy before I go networking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because if yeah. I just roll out of bed and, and go into a, a group, it's going to take me a while to actually show up as large as I am. Yeah, yeah. So it's important to just do little, little things. If you're not feeling great, then either switch your, change your energy a lot of times through music, mm-hmm. a lot of times through physical activity, and then do what it is you're going to do. It'll be more, you'll be more successful. Yes, we love our networking. <laughs> your favorite thing? <laughs> no, I, I actually do, but I to your point, you know, sometimes I'm on and sometimes I'm not, and it's a real thing. Um, and so yeah. I'm aware of that. So, yeah. Um, so I know we're well into the 21st century, I believe. Um, so what, even so, you know, we've had all this progress, but what are some ways women can be bold without being perceived as overly brash? Yeah, I think a lo- it's really looking at, like we were saying, Beyonce. Mm-hmm. When you look at her, she's pretty doggone bold. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't necessarily say she's brash. So everyone has their own style and even sometimes brash works for your people. Right, and let's say your audience, whoever your client is. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think women in general have dialed back their personalities really far Mm -hmm. over the years. It's just, we've been taught very, very differently than the men. Mm -hmm. Men have dialed theirs up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We've dialed ours down. Right. So sometimes it's going to feel when clients come to work with me and I'm giving them permission to be themselves. Mm -hmm. They're like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I can just say that. I Mm -hmm. can go, I can do this. I can do that. And I'm like, yeah, let's test it in the marketplace. Of course, are people coming to you? or not so it's to me it's like there's a finessing Mm -hmm. of all those those archetypes you know there's finessing of it so how far should one push something you're going to be uncomfortable in general Mm -hmm. because being an entrepreneur is all about being uncomfortable (laughs) definitely you're always stretching and growing right But, but i think um to allow yourself to really speak from your heart and speak what is true for you is very powerful and people respond to it because we're listening for real people call it authentic these days mm-hmm. but even to me it's real mm-hmm. it's like oh it's real that i don't like to go networking <laughs> that's a real thing it's and, a thing and i i have 
you know, rituals that I do in order to put myself in the proper energy space to go do that. Mm -hmm. And so people think just because, you know, I'm a speaker or whatever that I, uh, I love to be, I do love to be on stage, but the the truth of it is I have a a lot of introverted characteristics. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's about really being able to walk that line and mostly I always look at result. I always look at the result. Mm -hmm. But someone who's really an introvert can be a great networker. They're great at networking because they just are quiet and they ask questions. Mm -hmm. And people want to know about themselves. (laughs) That's our favorite subject. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah, that's my default. I, I am fairly reserved, but I... So I do try and keep the combo going, like asking questions, because then they won't ask me questions, right? So it's all good. Right. <laughs> so. so you're good. You're good at it. So although one's brand is specific to them slash their business, are there any crossover trends or things that, quote unquote, everyone should do? Well, I think we've touched on some of them. I think what everyone, you know, we're talking about what makes you unique, you know, as, as we were talking before. And I think when you can understand that you have a thread, uh, a theme, if you will, that runs through your life, Mm. there's a reason why you're doing what you're doing Mm. and it's run through your entire life. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of storytelling and a lot of allowing, digging deep into what are the defining moments of my life Mm. and what that looked like and what Mm. what was the lesson that I learned. Mm all of those things become the cornerstone of, of your brand because it's really who you are. Or I have an exercise I give my clients called um, power words. What are the three power words if you were to describe yourself mm. as a way of being? What are three words that would describe you when you're in the zone? When your personality disappears and you forget the kids at school and there's no time you are these three things and not like they don't change, but it's a great place to start. And then what are three words that describe you when you're working with a client mm-hmm. or, you're, or you're selling your mm-hmm. service? What is that like? When then you can use those to start to express what your brand actually is. Mm-hmm. Type, 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 type. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we need to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, if you will. So oh, what, are, what can we take away from, you know, well-known brands that quote unquote, we all know immediately, like, you know, they've been successful. We don't even have to say anything. We just say the word or see their logo. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, is there something, can we pick out anything? Can you pick out anything that we should emulate? So I'm saying like, you know, our Nike, everyone knows the Nike swoosh, the Amazon smile, the Kardashians, um, you know, Martha Stewart, Barbara Corcoran, you know, that's my real estate idol, um, mm-hmm. for example. So you don't necessarily have to answer regarding those people, but I mean, the concept, right? So, you know, we have these super successful brands. What are, is there anything we can, we can or should emulate from those who've got it right? I for- think what's interesting about that um, really is, those people that you mentioned mm. are really being who they are. Mm. Like Barbara Car- Cochran is not warm and fuzzy. She is not open. Does not does that does not come to mind. No, but I bet Nurture, you trust her expertise. Yes, nurturer does not come to mind. Yeah, yeah. innovator, probably innovator actually comes to mind, or mm-hmm. geek, mm-hmm. Uh, depending on how well you know her. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that. The problem is, is in any brand is, as we were saying, is when it doesn't align, mm. it's the biggest problem. Mm-hmm. But I think for all of those that you've mentioned and the ones that we know, like even Coca-Cola makes mistakes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> all remember the new Coke fiasco, yeah. Yeah, the Coke fiasco, right? They decided to change what we love. Right. Not a good idea. Right. Because they'd already set a very strong brand for 40, 50 years. 
And then all of a sudden they wanted to change it. And we're like, no, yeah, we love this. Right. So I think, you know, people get attached or in my case, when I show up without a leather jacket, my fans are like, where's your leather? Okay. So that's how strong a brand can be. Or like if Steve Jobs showed up and I guess he does once or he did once in a while in a suit and tie, but um, mostly we think of him as black t-shirt, and that black, turtleneck, yeah. black jeans and tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. He's not wearing cowboy boots or something else. He had an outfit that mm -hmm. we really were attached to. Mm -hmm. Very simple, understated. You know, we were waiting for him to reach into his pocket and pull out some amazing gadget that was going to blow our minds, right? So it's very innovative. Um, I think it's like that idea that, you know, you can model certain people, but su their success is really based on who they are. Right. Like Oprah was a failure, a failure, a major failure. Mm -hmm. And she just kept going and dialing into her strengths mm -hmm. and who she really is until she got recognized for interviews, mm -hmm. for really those heartfelt interviews she got very very good at it and it was all to de being developed around that nurturing way that she is with people and I think you know we have a tendency to look at other other people and go well they must have the key to how I should be because mm. they're so successful right right but the truth is they went through the same journey as everybody else they started on ground zero and they failed forward and mm. they just kept going. They just kept going until finally it all got dialed in and they could stand in the power of who they really are because all of us are incredibly powerful just the way we are. And it takes a while to, even when I work with my branding clients, it takes them a while to actually own what we create mm. like we'll create something and they'll go am i really that big mm. am i really that amazing mm. and extraordinary and it they are but they have to own you know they have to own it so right. i think one of the one of the problems with marketing too is that people think they have to do everything we we're talking about bright shiny objects a little earlier you only need one or two marketing channels. Mm -hmm. You don't need 50. You don't need everything. And people get, they think, oh, that's going to be the answer. Oh, that's going to be the answer. Or now it's, we're running to TikTok. That's going to be the answer. And it's not that. It's, those are, again, the tactics of something. Sure. You want to dial in who you really are and how, what your brand is saying, mm -hmm. the voice of the brand so that everything aligns and then you can you can move it into whatever arena of marketing which is always changing that you want to that you want to do and i think it, a lot of it needs to be something you'd like to do instead of something you think you have to do cuz the have tos don't get, don't get done they just don't get done if you're having fun doing it you're going to keep doing it yeah on the other hand i would say are there in any branding trends you wish would just go away right now that's a really interesting question um i have things that i favor of course i have preferences over other things um I'm not crazy about, we we're touching on the Kardashians. I'm not crazy about um, people who really aren't doing anything in their life. Mm. And then it's built up like they're an influencer. That whole influence word kills that thing me. Does Every time I hear that. <laughs> that thing does make me a little nuts. I'm like, yeah, yeah. if you were busy having an interesting life, you wouldn't have time to be doing all the social media but you know and it causes problems for for um 
younger people mm -hmm. who are not they're not really aligned with who they are yet so they're mm -hmm. looking outside of themselves sure. for a validation mm -hmm. and to be important and be a part of something and so it does cause I think some psychological problems that we will be dealing with in the future um so that's probably my biggest one yeah little influencer thing I can see you love it too <laughs> it's it's oh my gosh yeah okay we are like right here. Okay, so Anne, tell us what excites you about your branding business, Renegade Branding. Oh my God. I love, 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 love my clients. I love working with the women I work with um, because it's so fun and empowering to them. Most of my clients have over COVID have doubled and tripled their income, mm -hmm. which blows my mind. I'm like, how about me? <laughs> I'm always the last one to catch up with my clients. <laughs> busy working on their businesses with them. But I think um, I love people. And I, as I said before, I think we're all really fascinating and fascinated by each other. Mm -hmm. And I love developing language and visuals and things that create more um, fascination and interest mm -hmm. for someone to get more interested in understanding what, what my clients are working on or what their business is about. Most of the people I work with have um, they're purpose driven. Mm. So their big hearts and their overriding values um, are inspiring and interesting. It's not just like, I want to make money, no. which is nothing wrong with making money. I love making money too. And like, we're talking about vacations. <laughs> like, I need some money to go on vacation. <laughs> it's all good. I want money happening in the background while exactly, I'm exactly. sitting by the pool and whatever. So I think, you know, but when you can have something that's really uh, driven by purpose and heart and it makes money, it's the perfect combination to me, to living a life that really answers the questions, did I live, did I love, and did I matter? Mm -hmm. Which I think are the three big questions of life. Um, when you have a business that allows you to express that for yourself, mm -hmm. it's extremely satisfying. And then the money becomes like, yippee, I can reinvest. When people that good people make good money, they do good. That's just right. part right. of how it works. So to me, the excitement of, of working with my clients is really helping them to see their unique value and that what they do is super important in the world and nobody does it the way they do it. Well, Anne, I don't know where the time went, but I tell you what, it was a good convo and um, I always listen to a good playback, um, you know, so I can just check things out. So I can't wait to hear this again. But as we wrap up, um, how can people reach you or find out more about you and your uh, services or find you on social media, have whatever you wanna share? How can people get more Ann? Um, okay. Well, Ann Bennett Marketing. So it's A-N-N-B-E-N-N-E-T-T -T marketing.com. I have a um, archetype assessment uh, when you first open the site that you can take and it'll tell you exactly which archetype you are. Mm -hmm. I've done it for like over a hundred women. It's always spot on and it's really fun to take. Um, so that'd be great if people want to do that or find me on Facebook and Bennett Marketing on Facebook. Well, awesome doodles. And thank you so much. I have so enjoyed thank our conversation. So I know our listeners will love it too. <laughs> this is really fun. Thank you so much. We will see you on the next episode. Stay tuned for the next Voyager interview. <laughs>